All right, welcome to episode 48 of the At Bat Podcast presented by War Media, where we give you our thoughts on the latest Chicago baseball news as well as take a trip around the league. I am Saul Rodriguez, joined by my co-host Miles Porter. How are we doing today, Miles? Hey, doing good. You know, we got a we got a season opening victory last night. Yes, sir. Man, feeling feeling good. I actually, <laughs> during warm-ups before the game, by the way, I've been I've been working out all all off season, throwing and hitting and everything. When we take the field and I get like the warm up ground ball from third base, the first throw I tweak my back. <laughs> like we haven't even scored the first pitch of the season yet, and I'm already hurt. <laughs> oh, so no. like I'm swinging yesterday, and I'm like not like using my legs. It's more like arms, like a push. <laughs> hey man, I got the oh. game tying RBI, game tying single yesterday. It's a great comeback win, by the way. And um, yeah, man, happy happy to be playing again, and you know. We're getting it going. We're in the Wisconsin State League and the Rock League now as well. And so it's just, it's, it's, it's great. It's great. Very, Let's, very go. Let's go. Yeah, I'm very happy. Yeah, I mean, we, hey, I said it right before we came out. Finally, we're back to the Miles Corner, man, where we get to finally, you know, break down the Milwaukee Jaguars because, of course, you know, you're playing over there, semi-pro baseball. I love to see it. Love to see hey, yeah. the, the defending MVP over here, Miles Porter. <laughs> my, boy, my boy's going to act humble, but it's what it is. Facts are facts. And uh, you know, stole base. You know, get the- stole base yesterday. Oh, I stole base. Let's go. <laughs> Anyone listening, I just want to point this out right now because I'm fast. All right, I'm really fast. I just want people to know I'm quick. All right, I want I want to steal. My goal this year is to steal at least five, but I want hey. ten. I want to take ten. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. Why not? Why not? Yeah. If you don't I know now, you know. Second yesterday, they didn't even throw it. I was like, of course you didn't, because I'm fast. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because because you're, so, you're so fast. But now, yeah. now, hey, but now the word's out though, man. The words out is it by words out. steal. They, 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 all the pitches are going to be on that scouting uh, board now. Oh, uh, my back hurts. I'm not stealing. <laughs> we'll get out to the media. We're going to out to the media. My, Miles, yeah, 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 uh, exactly. uh, probable for tomorrow or far, probable for next week. So that way the pitches are like, oh, we're not going to worry about this dude running. Oh, that'd be <laughs> genius, though. If you think about it, that'd be genius in a playoff game to talk about some dude like his ankles busted or something. He might, he's not going to run. And then he's, yeah. he's healthy, he just runs. I'm surprised. I, I mean, who knows if this happened? I wouldn't be surprised if it happened. Look, yeah. I'm putting pressure on the infielders. I had a broken bat yesterday, right back, right to the first baseman. I saw him kind of lollygagging to it, and I was like, "Oh, I'm coming! Mm-hmm. You better, you better get that ball because <laughs> don't, don't let me be safe." <laughs> and he kind of had like an yes. "oh shit" moment to the back. <laughs> it was so funny, bro. The, you put the pressure on, bro. The, I, I can't, I can only imagine. You know, I, I, it's like me, like, I'm telling you, bro, when I played, when I played softball and, you know, I played catcher, which says it all for a baseball player, you understand that most of the time in softball leagues, you play catcher because you can't play defense. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll just say it. I'll say how it is. And uh, I'm telling you, when, when anybody, anybody hits the ball on the ground right in front of me, I start sweating. I'm like, <laughs> and like literally like, and like, it's just, it's scary, bro. It's scary. Especially for me that like, I, I have like just no skills on the defensive side. Yeah, it's whatever. But I will say this: as after I'm done uh, roasting myself, I I do have a great I do have a great eye though. I walk a lot. Oh no, I bet, I bet. I mean, <laughs> listen, with someone of the knowledge of the game like you, I would not expect <laughs> anything anything less. I swing at everything. I swing out of my shoes. <laughs> I just I can't help it. I don't strike out a lot. I'll put the ball in play, but I will swing at anything that looks mildly close. I like how you buy it. But like I just listen. I'm, I'm a swinger. I don't like to look. Hey, hey well, I'll forget like you too. If you're gonna be, if you if you're gonna hit it and you're gonna hit it, you, if you can hit it hard, you 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 know you're better yeah. off swinging at everything because putting the ball in play. I mean, you can put it in play. It's not like you, you know what I mean. It is what it is. I get it because you're good, Miles. It's, it's how it is, you know. And if you, you swing at everything, you're good. Don't worry about it. I mean, look at Mike Trout. He swings at mostly everything too. Look at so it's like that's right? true. And, uh, and, I will not, and, not complain about being put in the same sentence. <laughs> Uh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, gotta stay humble, but I'm not gonna stop. <laughs> for real, for real. But uh, nah, man, nah, yeah, I love, I love it, man. Hey, but well, one more question I was gonna ask you with that: Do any, did they, did they start doing any type of uh, uh, pitch clock or stuff for that league as well, or, or is that just like n- not even a thought for them? So for the Wisconsin State League, I think we have the pitch clock. Oh, nice. So how is it? Is it similar to like the MLB one, or is it like longer? I think, I think it's similar. Uh, we haven't played. Um, any WSL games yet. Um, but I think, I think it's going to be a similar format. Um, okay. And, you know, yeah, well, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see. This is our first time in this, in this league. And so we'll, we'll see, we'll see what happens with that. But I'm assuming, I'm assuming it'll be similar, maybe not as aggressive. Yeah. Um, but um, 
Yeah, yeah, I think I think the Wisconsin State League has it, so uh, we'll see. That's pretty dope. And they call I'm getting they they so they call a strike if like you're not in the box by a certain time or whatever. It's like that type. Of yeah, type of yeah. Oh, okay. And the okay. good thing about this is that a lot of younger guys are more receptive to it, so that mm-hmm. pace of play isn't too much of an issue. Yeah. For the this younger generation of players true. who already kind of play true. at a quick pace, or if you watch a college game, it's just very yeah. very fast. You saw it today, um, yeah. so you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that that, that is true, and it's like you know people are like oh this isn't gonna last or they're not blah 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 and it's like no actually it's only gonna get better because the younger guys yeah. are already know they're gonna are gonna know the the status quo and gonna know what to do and you know yeah. it, that's that's the best part of it right it's like yeah. you got guys like Manny Machado are gonna take forever up there because they've been playing for 10 years and you yeah. know that's just how it is so I get yeah I definitely that's a good that's a good good to hear yeah. uh but now uh, uh shifting to the major league baseball man I mean here in Chicago uh, it hasn't looked great the last couple of weeks uh, with both sides of the t- of, of the city. Um, you know, you got the Cubs that are 18 and 19. The White Sox uh, continuing to struggle at 13 and 26. But we'll start with the Cubs. Uh, as, of course, today we got the two uh, Cubs guys on here, man. I mean, look, 18 and 19, third in the NL Central. Still, I, I still, you know, still say better than I expected to be at this, you know, this time of the year. Two and a half games uh, behind the Pirates who uh, are starting to look more like uh, the Pirates we expected. You know, they're 21 <laughs> yeah. and 17 now. Yeah. Um, but just off the, off the bat, I mean, what, what have you seen from the Cubs in the last couple of weeks? I mean, it, it just hasn't, they haven't played like they did in the first month of the season. Um, you know, they, uh, look like they might've like found their, their footing again, because of course they went one and seven on the road against the Marlins and the, the Nats. That was, that was gross. And then they came back, played the Nats one, two out of three. Yeah. And it's, I was like, okay, they're starting to, you know, they look a little more like themselves in that series, whatever. Right. But yeah. no. Uh, then they have a uh, Wilson Contreras and the and the Cardinals come in and went two out of three and you know? and a lot of people are like did the Cardinals did the, you know because the Dodgers got hot until they beat us two out of three um, <laughs> or they beat us in a series I should say um, so like a lot of people are like oh is this it like are the Cardinals gonna we'll talk about the Cardinals for sure but um, yeah kind of kind of for you uh, from your perspective what has gone wrong with the Cubs over the last you know week and a half or so you know I think I think at first kind of dating back to that Washington series the hitting was kind of non-existent. Um, now they come home um, and they're starting to hit very well. We're getting guys on base. We're not driving guys in. We're striking out with the bases loaded. We're rolling a double play with the bases loaded. Lazy fly ball with two outs with, with runners in scoring position. That has been the Cubs' biggest downfall. And I think the pitchers in general on this ball club have really been keeping the Cubs kind of afloat. Granted, offensively, you know, we've been, we've been incredible overall this year, but a lot of the credit goes to this pitching for keeping us in these ball games. Um, you look at, you look at game two against the Cardinals this, this week. Uh, I think the pitching kept us in it. Honestly, we kind of gave it up towards the end, but we had a lot of opportunities that game to really break it open. Um, Javier Assad, amazing, amazing start. Uh, we're not start. Uh, just an amazing outing that he had. Um, this just being another example, Justin Steele still pitching well and, 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 and doing things that haven't been done since Jake Arrieta in 2016. That says a lot. Just now it's just about time you hit it. Now, the, now we're starting to get the hits. Now we have to make sure we continuously drive in runs, put together quality at bats um, and not kind of take anything for granted. I think it's great that Chris Mor- Christopher Morell is finally up and saying that for the longest time that he should have been up uh, for and for him to tear it up as well as he did, that's great. Now you're coming back up to the MLB, just hot. He's fired up. He's playing great. Um, so, you know, you know, I th- I just think we just gotta just you know, gotta hit the ball hard. Gotta find gotta find some holes. Um, and not kind of take these at bats for granted in big moments. Yeah, man, and you're right. And it's one of those things where when I've talked to other Cub fans or seen online, it's more of like the Cubs are kind of more regressing to the mean, I guess, with their offense. Like, like we, in, in April, they were almost playing uh, even above, obviously they're playing above expectations, but above like what their numbers say usually. Right. So like yeah. a lot of people like looked at their offense and were like, well, this isn't going to last. Like, you know, you know, you know uh, like for example, the Rays are also coming re- kind of regressing a little bit too, is they yeah. kind of like maybe, maybe about like a, like a week ago, they had like a, a still an OPS closer to, um, to like not like 950 as a team, right? And now they're yeah. they're at 856. Um, the Cubs were like the second best offensive team in the league like last week, and now they sit at like number six in OPS. So yeah, it's kind of, they're kind of a little bit 
you know, going now to where a lot of people expected them to be. Although it's still nice to see guys like uh, Dansby Swanson kind of snap out of their, their, um, their slumps a little bit because he was a little yeah. cold and he finally yeah. looked a little better at the plate. But I will say this also is that guys like Swanson, guys like Hap is that even when they're not hitting, uh, they're still getting on base. I mean, Hap had a three walk game yeah. the other day. And yeah. so it's like, you love, you love to see that with guys like that. It's that even when they're not hitting the ball, right. They're still seeing it. Right. If that makes sense. Right. So it's like, it's one of those things where it's, you know, that's appreciated, but yeah, it, it really sucks because the, it feels like the offense has just been letting the, the pitching down. Right. And like, like because every pitcher has gone out there basically and and you know I mean I know uh, I saw today that Stroman and Steele have or the are atop the league leaders and uh, quality starts with seven yeah yeah so look it, every guy is going out there I know Tyone's been a little shaky since the uh, since come back off the IL expected it is what it is you know a guy you know uh, coming out but that one game that you're talking about uh, that you know it was tied up until like the ninth inning and Paul DeYoung hit a, mm-hmm. hit a homer to break the tie and all that so. Yeah. You know, Cubs could have Cubs could have Cubs could have easily won that one. It just didn't work out. Um, and then of course they blow them out on a Wednesday, ten to four. But um, yeah, I mean it's it's been uh it's been very inconsistent from the offensive perspective. But I still think that you know they'll be fine in the end to still uh, kind of maintain it. I mean, look, Bellinger's been Bellinger. Uh, Morel obviously came up. He hit a home run in that Cardinal series. So and yeah. and you're right, man. I mean, think about it. Like a lot of people say, is it, who who knows where the Cubs would be if Morel would have came up and hit the way he's been hitting in the minors. It's different. It's a different level, obviously, but yeah. who knows? I mean, he obviously took something from that. If he's going to come up here and hit a bomb, this dead center, you know? So um, yeah, it's been, it's been interesting, but I also want to ask you this, Matt Mervis has kind of been up here now for like, I guess like a week now, right? Almost a week. Uh, well, yeah. what have what you, yeah. What have you liked from him? I mean, I feel like he hasn't necessarily hit a stroke yet, but he has had some good ABs. I know he had one that was like a pitch at bad. Yeah. And then also, I mean, in his debut, he had a single, and an RBI, but he, he, it looks like he has a great eye so far. Um, he just hasn't gotten all yeah. the hits yet, but, but what have you seen so far in the first week with him? Yeah. I, uh, I'm seeing a very mature hitter uh, in the beginning. And I mm-hmm. think um, his play discipline is incredible. Um, right now, I think it's just a matter of just finding his barrel right now. He's just not hitting the ball very hard, but that's not going to last very long. Um there's a reason why he's up here. We've, we've seen what he's capable of doing, dating back to last year. I think it's for him, it's just finding the barrel. That's, that's, that's the main thing. Um, getting comfortable. And I think it's great that David Ross is putting him out there every single day since he's been up and giving him the at-bats and giving him the opportunity to, to, to grow and continuously to sprout as a, as a ball player. Um, it's finding the barrel. Finding the barrel. The, the, the pitching at this level is much more competitive, uh, much more efficient. Um, so it's up to him as to how he makes that adjustment, but he will make that adjustment. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just a matter of when. It's just a matter of, of when. Um, I think he's great from the left side. I, I think he's so solid as a first baseman. Uh, you know, with, with Murphy, we just got to just catch some barrels. That's all it is. He's not hitting the ball very hard right now. Yeah, no, th- th- that is a good take on that. I mean, some of the guys that when they come up, at, like if the ball just looks different, I'm, I'm assuming, right, it's just like <laughs> – you know, the way that it's coming to you and the way that the, the way that they're approaching you. Right. Because I think that's what they always talk about. I feel like when a guy, when a guy comes in, it, it's obviously going to be, there's going to be, you know, uh, a, a period of, of, of adapting. Right. And, and, um, mm-hmm. and a lot of the way that, or one of the major things of they have to adapt to is the way that they approach you. Cause now, yeah. you know, in the minors that they don't have the same type of tech or the same type of uh, I guess you would say like, you know, scouting reports. Right. And, and they don't they don't attack you the same way, and especially when you got like a guy like I don't know Max Scherzer attacking you out there, it's different than a guy in in in, in AAA or whatever. But it yeah. is interesting, yeah, the way he's approaching you know his at bats, and and he does look man, he does look like a, a vet in there uh, when he takes yeah. certain pitches inside. Because um, the thing with him is that I think they try to attack him on the inside, and he's really good at bringing his arms in to to get yeah. that one in there. So yeah. so I, I I do I do see a lot of people still trying to attack him inside now. Or in, the, or in the last week that he's been in the lineup. And I want to, I want to see him kind of like turn those around. And I think in mm-hmm. time, I you probably get a confidence boost and start, you know, matching as they call him match Mervis. Yeah. Right. So yeah. um, another, another guy I wanted to talk to, to talk to you about as well as like, you know, because he's, he's atop the leader, like leaderboards on almost all, or a lot of the pitching. I mean, both Stroman and feel are guys that are, you know, atop the, the statistical uh, boards for pitchers, but a guy like steel, man, I mean, like, dude, I feel like every, you know, every start he goes out there and he hasn't been perfect in some of the starts. Like for example, when he faced the Cardinals this week, he wasn't really on his, I feel like he wasn't really on his a game, but he was able to hold him to two runs. 
Um, and I believe he's still – he's on that streak that of, like, you know, I think it's uh, – I forgot how many games I, I got to get that that right, but uh, uh, of starts in a row with only allowing two runs or less, and only two guys have done that. It's him and Arietta. So, that to me, when you're doing something Arietta's done, I mean, that's crazy because the dude had an elite season. So, yeah, I mean, what, what have you liked from Steele? What have you seen from your perspective, like from a hitter's perspective? Like, how would you attack a guy like that, especially right now? Oh my God, nasty from the left side. Mm-hmm. Everything, everything uh, out of his hand just comes in on right-handed hitters uh, and and breaks away dramatically from left-handed hitters. And he's not blowing anybody away either. His velocity isn't what's getting mm-hmm. isn't what's getting him these results. It's just his stuff in general. He knows how to locate. He knows how to paint. He knows the. He just has great off-speed pitches, um, and they sweep. They sweep well. So I think. That success has brought him a long way, and and, and here he does remind me of, right now a lot of like a prime John Lester. Clearly, yeah. you could tell that they, he really was studying him very closely, mm-hmm. with the conversations that they have, uh, and now look at him. Um, so I think I think just with him, it's just you know, just outsmarting hitters, just reading reading hitters well, learn, looking at their tendencies, looking at their approach during during at, at bats, their, their their swings on what he's throwing them. Um, he's just been electric. He's been very electric. And I think uh, he's going to continue to have this success because it is very evident that he's a very smart ball player. Um, and so really, I just think he just has guys very uncomfortable in the box. Yeah, no, man. I mean, and, and, and you can make an argument that if the All-Star game was today, you know, first of all, Steele and Stroman would be there. Um, yes. And Steele would have a really good shot at starting the game. So, yeah, um, yeah I mean, it just shows you how how good of a pitcher he's been. And the fact that, like, I know uh, Jim Deshays always talks about in telecast, the fact that, like, you know, he's uh, a two-pitch pitcher, basically, right? He's throwing fastball slider. And it's interesting, yeah. right, because he, he looks a lot like like uh, like Lester, but he's attacking the, the, the batters with different pitches. Like, you know, yeah. uh, obviously Lester – his his uh bread and bro- bread and butter was the the cutter right and the backdoor yeah. cutter especially right mm-hmm. and uh, like right handers or whatever but he's a doing with the sl- he, or steals doing it with the slider so that's I think that's pretty fascinating to see uh like because obviously you know we see so much in you know so much Lester in steel uh but yeah. in a different way which I think is badass so um that's yeah. cool uh uh in, a, in an unfortunate uh spin here uh Horner is not going to be out or Horner has been out with hamstring uh uh with a hamstring injury uh they haven't said how long i mean he's not he didn't hit the IL, which is a good sign uh but hopefully he's back for this trip uh this three city trip that the cubs are going to go on because this three city trip is going to be crazy dude like they're going uh minnesota um i think philly as well uh here let me pull this good yeah they're going to minnesota oh sorry yeah minnesota houston then philly um so that's going to be an intense an intense uh <laughs> um, road trip, uh, yeah. road trip for like taking on teams that are, you know, playoff hopefuls, man. And I mean, for Minnesota, which of course, you know, like I said, last episode, I'll be there for Saturday and Sunday. Hopefully it's, I think it's, it shows rain for Saturday. So hopefully that game doesn't, you know, doesn't affect it. But, uh, yeah, yeah I mean, what, what, what are you looking ahead to seeing these, uh, these playoff caliber teams, you know, the Cubs schedule hasn't been easy to start the year, but it, but they've played, yeah. I mean, if you, if you would have told me that we're be 18 and 19 right now, we're in the second week of May. I would be happy. I tr- I swear to God, I'd be, I would have been happy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. looking ahead at, at the at these you know these series on the road, what, what do you what do you see in the Twins, uh, Astros, and, and Phillies? Um, I think I think there's very competitive baseball yeah. um, coming up. Um, and even even when they get back, when the Mets come to town, um, they got mm-hmm. they got some good yep. tests ahead of them. And like you said, the, the schedule has been easy. It ain't getting any easier, yeah. um, but that's great. That's that makes for great baseball. That makes for exciting baseball. Um, I think I think the Twins are the Twins are in an interesting spot. Um, I think it's there's a lot of frustration surrounding Correa. And by the way, I think he handled uh, the media very well the other day, saying, "Yeah, boo me too." I, 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 you know, with the amount of money that I'm making and playing like that, it's a very it's a very mature answer. Um, so you have players like that that are trying to break out of a slump. Uh, you look you look ahead to, to the Astros, a team that has started this year kind of weird and, 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 and Altuve being out and, and the Rangers kind of getting off to a hotter start and the Angels getting off to a, a hotter start. Um, but the Astros are still the Astros. Um, 
the Cubs are going to have a challenge in Houston. Uh, and you know what? That's going to be okay. I think when you look ahead to these two very competitive AL teams, these are good tests for the Cubs. Uh, they come out and they win these series or they, they take, you know, two out of three from, from the Twins and maybe drop one of three to the Astros. What are we going to work on to get better before we face the Phillies, who I don't care what anyone says, offensively, that is one of the scariest teams I've ever seen assembled in my entire life. Now that Harper's back, you got Turner, mm-hmm. you got Schwarber. There's so many things to look at. There's a lot of things that the Cubs have to strategize and how they want to attack these teams. Um, it's got to take it one game at a time. Um, mm-hmm. out, out of these te- out of all these teams, I got to say, maybe the Phillies uh, will, will be the least of their challenges, but that's hard to say. Um, mm-hmm. I just think the Phillies and the Astros are much more established, solid teams. Um, and that's not taking anything away from Philadelphia being in the World Series last year. Yeah, no, I mean, look, the thing with, with Philly is that, like, they started off a little rough, then they got a little bit better. Yeah. I think they, they went to, like, 15 and 13. And yeah. then all of a sudden they lose, like, I think, like, what is that, six games in a row, 15 yeah. and 19. Mm-hmm. And now they won three in a row. So they're kind of like – I feel like the Cubs, the Astros, the Phillies, they're all in the same spot right now. They're kind of yes. figuring out their identity right now. Mm-hmm. So, like, they're kind of like for this season, right? I mean, Phillies, I think uh, for sure you're right that Phillies, you know, regardless of where they're at right now, should be worried because, I mean, look at where they were last year. Then they got they, – yeah. you know, they got uh, Thompson and, you know, they went off. So, Rob Thompson. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it, – they, they, they got nothing to worry about. The Astros – it's a little odd of where they're at right now. I would have thought they'd been playing, would it would you know be playing better. Um, but again, they'll be there in the end. I think ultimately, regardless, you know, Fran Valdez still being himself. So, yeah. and I think that with the Twins, I think it's you're right. I was going to say that you brought up a good point with uh, Correa there. You know, it's cool to see a star like him kind of wear it right and kind of like not. You know, you you could sit here and, and probably argue and be like, you know, the fans, you know, they have no right to boo me, blah blah, right? Because we've seen guys yeah. do that before, but that never yeah. ends well. And so uh, it's cool to see a guy like him kind of wear it and, and say, you know what? Hey, I got to be better if they if I don't want to be booed. So, um, yeah, so that'll be cool. And 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 uh, and hopefully they're able to get a more successful uh, road trip here the, are the Cubs. Uh, moving on to the White Sox now, I mean, 13 and 26, they're fourth in the AL Central. They sit, I think, like eight and a half games back now uh, in the Central. Yeah, eight and a half games back there. You know, the, the Twins, of course, like we said, you know, they're still in first place. They're three games ahead yeah. of the Tigers there. Yeah. That, I mean, that division is just atrocious. You know, you got the, you got the Twins, 21-17, 17-19 uh, Tigers, and you got the Guardians, 17-20. and 20. The fact that the White Sox aren't last is, uh, is, is, is interesting there. But, yeah, I mean, look, man, uh, it's been a rough go. Uh, for the White Sox, and and Ooh. you know, what have you uh, what have you seen from them from them, or what have you heard from about, about you know from their fan base even too? You got White Sox friends that you know fans that are uh, White Sox fans. Like, what have you heard, or what have you thought about the White Sox? Have you seen any type of improvement? I mean, look, Giolito has been pitching well, and he's yeah. been looking a little more like himself. But yeah. it, it overall, it hasn't really translated to wins. I mean, you're they're coming off a series loss to the Royals, where they lost three out of four. Um, they were able to beat the, the the Reds in a series. I really thought they were gonna you know turn it around when they they beat the Twins two games out of three. And yeah. unfortunately, it hasn't translated to anything there. Um, I think that just goes to show how the the AL Central is so unpredictable. But yeah, I mean, what have you what have you got for the White Sox over the last week, man? Oh, gosh, I mean, yeah, it looked like they're 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 picking it up there and they're gaining some momentum, uh, and kind of just fell off fell off the map again and. I've really been holding out for this team as long as I can. Mm-hmm. Um, I just – I question the motivation right now for some of these guys. I really do. Um, the way that this roster is built, there's no reason why they should be anything less than first place, in, in my opinion, the weakest division in baseball. Um, mm-hmm. So that's that's very disappointing. Tim Anderson being back is great, and, and he's, he's a spark plug. But I think overall, uh, offensively, this team has not uh, been performing very well. And it's unfortunate that you got Aloy injured again uh, for, what, mm-hmm. four to six weeks? It's, yeah. There's also so many unfortunate things that have been going on with this ball club. And, and it's like I'm at the point with them where it's like I almost don't know what to say. Um. Because you don't, you don't even know what can help this team at this point. They got the new manager. Um, they had kind of virtually the same roster minus Abreu. What is, what is it that this ball club needs? And, and, and you know, if they're still at this point, 
you know, by the by the time the trade deadline comes around, what are we doing? Are we are we going to blow this up, or are we going to continue to kind of just accept everything that's been going on with this ball club? So, you know, I think I think it's just a matter of trying to see what moves is this ball club going to make. What do the White Sox want out of this season? What do they want out of their future? Yeah, no, I, and you, you kind of it's a good transition because that's what I was going to ask you that you know like you know. It was, Earlier this week, a report came out that the White Sox are going to move on from Giolito at the deadline. Kind of, kind of like you know uh, what we all expected, but obviously it seems a little bit like you know premature uh, to say the yeah. least. But um, in, uh, facing yeah. the facts, I mean, it's kind of they're in a hole that's really tough to come back from in general. Um, yeah. And but it, it, you know, what do you think about that? I mean, we you know I said you know like I said earlier, Giolito has been pitching better, so I think that's one of the main reasons um, that he and it's going to make him a hot commodity at the deadline, but. Is there anyone else that you see kind of moving? I mean, we've talked, I think Gabe has said it before, and some of the guys that, you know, moved, you know, when he's been on the show, some of the guys that can move. Uh, but is there anyone else that you think, or or do you think Giolito will be the main guy that they're going to look to deal if everything heads that way? Which, of course, we don't hope that happens. But, yeah. you know, more often than not, it, it, baseball is is, is is pretty rough sport when you, when you start off slow. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe Michael Kopech as well. Um, mm. I'm unsure on – any of his trade clauses, I'm I'm unsure when it comes to that, but I can see a guy like that possibly being moved. He has great stuff. Maybe he just needs a change a change of scenery to perform the way that we all expected him to. Right now, he's, he's toting a five nine ERA, um, mm-hmm. but he's K thirty six. Uh, so yeah, a few of these arms that I look at on this roster as I'm talking to you. Um, I can see, I can see, you know, a couple of guys getting moved. Maybe Joe Kelly. Um, it's so interesting because it really, it really depends on what this team wants. I think, you know, I think Rakan came out and said he still believes in this group. He still wants to compete this year. But at what point do you kind of have to look at everything at a face value and be like, hey, this is not working. This is not going well. The fan base is unhappy. The attendance is, re- is reflecting it. The players are reflecting it in their play. At what point or do you have to just accept this isn't going to go the way we want it to, but that does, that does, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but the Southsiders have a lot to figure out and a lot of decisions to make. Yeah, man. I mean, and, you know, a lot of people have said, you know, uh, Ryan Zorp at his age will not want to rebuild you know, start from scratch. So it kind of makes you think that maybe they're not going to get rid of everybody, but that they're going to be, you know, at least, you know, Giolito is a free agent. So he's kind of like the easiest one to, to yeah. kind of, um, you know, get rid of from that perspective. Yeah. Um, Liam Hendricks also, if he comes back and pitches well, is a guy that they probably might consider because he's an older yeah. reliever, um, you know, and also just the fact that he's got like, you know, a year after this year on his yeah. contract, you know, might get the Sox a little bit of a better haul there. Um, mm-hmm. you know, so, um, yeah, that's, that's, those are a couple of guys that know Tim Anderson as well. Um, he's got a year left after this, after this year. So he's somebody that, that a lot of teams might consider. I mean, I feel like, you know, people have talked about this, but like the, you know, the Dodgers going out there and getting Tim Anderson yeah. would be something very enticing and they have a great system. So that's a good thing for the Sox yeah. because they could get a nice little haul yeah. for, for Tim Anderson, um, and, and kind of, you know, recoup. Cause those guys, I mean, look at guys like James Outman over there who, look like they're ready to come up and just, you know, rake anyways. So, you know, those guys are, you know, they're always ready to hit. So that would be a good thing for the White Sox there. But yeah, I mean, also another thing I want to ask you about the White Sox is at what point, you know, would you shuffle a lineup like that up? Because it just hasn't, it hasn't been working for them. And and I think for a lineup that, you know, when you on paper going into the season, you're like, you know, Tim Anderson, Robert up there, Benintendi. Yeah. Uh, look good, you know, on paper, but yeah. it just hasn't worked out. Like, it, it, do you think it, if you were say, I'll give you this, you're the manager for the White Sox right now. Are you shuffling the lineup to kind of get things going? I know a lot of people were kind of mad that, you know, it took forever for Vaughn to even get to, um, you know, like the third <laughs> spot in the lineup. He was hitting seven yeah. like a couple of weeks ago. So yeah. Um, yeah. Is it one of those things where, you know, you, you're still going to stick Tim Anderson up there, Robert up there. I mean, Tim Anderson is like the best part, probably the best hitter they got right now. Yeah. So maybe you don't want to move him, but a guy like Robert, I mean, I know, uh, you know, um, Raheem, he's moved down in that lineup now. But Benintendi, I mean, he just it hasn't looked good at all. He got 263, 
but the OPS yeah. doesn't reflect that at 639. Uh, is it, you know, would, would you be moving around some pieces in that lineup? If so, like, how would you even manage Ooh. that right now? I don't know, man. I, <laughs> mm, I'm, looking, I'm yeah. looking at this lineup as you're, as, you're, as you're asking me, and I don't know what, who I would move where. Mm. Maybe I, I move Gavin Sheets up to the three spot, maybe the four spot. Uh, this is not a very offensively performing team at the moment. Mm. You got, I think you got to keep Tim Anderson at the top of the lineup. You yeah. got to keep Tenny at the top of the lineup. Um, you got to be careful where you move on. There isn't much moving around or shuffling around that I would do. And, and I say that because I maybe you move a Hanser Alberto up in the lineup. Mm-hmm. But then again, Grandal is, I don't know. I don't know. Really, really, this is one of those few moments in the show where I am at a loss for words as to how you can maybe switch it up mm-hmm. with this ball club in, in, in terms of, what product, what lineup are you throwing out there? Are we, who's playing where? This is a very tough situation that they're in. Um, in general, I think the lineup is kind of just the way it's supposed to be right now. And mm. you kind of got to move it around if guys start performing well. I mean, maybe you could shake it up. And with a record like this, what do you have to lose? Just shake it up a little bit. Um, yeah. But you, but you also still want to win games. You also got to know where – where guys will perform. And a lot of the guys at the bottom of this White Sox lineup that I'm looking at, you don't want to move them. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and you're right. I mean, there's there's not much there's not much there to, to shuffle around in the sense of uh, names there. But, um, I mean, hopefully Eloy is able, able to come back healthy and, and give them, a, you know, a, a little bit of hope there. And, and when he does come back, if they're still even close to, to being in, in the race at all of anything. Um, but, you know, kind of looking at the schedule ahead, I mean, they for the White Sox, they got Houston for three at home. Then they got the Guardians at three. So they're going to be home for a little bit because they're playing the Guardians. After that, they play the Royals at home as well. So nine-game homestand. Uh, what's up today? I mean, for those those teams that are coming in, I mean, the, 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 we talked about the Astros. Um, still a better team compared to the White Sox, right? The Guardians, again, still a better team, uh, even though the Guardians haven't really taken off just yet. But – uh, what what's your hopes in the next uh, nine games for the for the Sox in this homestand that, that they could you know pull off uh, maybe Cease finds his feet again Kopeck it's been rough out there you know Clevenger even um, hasn't been pitching as well as he did in April but yeah what do you hope for the White Sox in, in this in this homestand man I'm just hoping that they 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 catch some fire you know they're they're coming back home I hope the fans show out for them um, it'll be it'll be fun seeing Jose Abreu yeah going back going back to back to the rate. Um, and it's 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 so it's it's funny how baseball works. You know, Wilson Contreras coming back to Wrigley, and then and then Jose Abreu coming back to to guarantee rate. It's just it's just funny how how baseball works. Some familiar faces coming back to Chicago this week. Um, that's gonna be tough, man. This is it's gonna be really tough. And and the Guardians have really been handling their business against the White Sox over the years. And then the Astros are only gonna get better as the year goes on, as as they get more healthy, as they start to catch fire and. You know, the Sox had a, kind of had a tough time against the Royals. So hopefully being at home kind of inspires them um, and, and they're able to find some sort of motivation to muster up some wins. But this is they're, – they're, they're, they're in a tough spot. They're, they're in for a tough one. And it's like you want to look at this and say, hey, you know, when the Royals come to town, you, you'll handle them. No, no, you lost three or four. Um, <laughs> so I think I think it's just a matter of, being back home, being being comfortable, uh, but you can't just be comfortable at home. You got to take that momentum and also perform well on the road. So hopefully they're able to find some sort of some sort of spark while being back in Chicago. Yeah, no, it's gonna be you know weird for for the Sox to receive a Brayu as a visiting player, um, yeah. and you know hopefully they're able to uh, kind of you know get get you know get their their uh, stuff together against these good teams that they're gonna face because you know that's. You know, it, it doesn't get any easier, you know, just like any other schedule, right? But, I mean, the, the Tigers have been playing them well. They got the Angels. They got Otani and, and Trout, you know, coming into town. Uh, you know, they, you know, after that, they got the Tigers again. And then, you know, just it's it's a, it's a, it's a hard July. Or sorry, a hard June as well because you got to face the Yankees, Marlins, Dodgers, Mariners, yeah. Rangers again. So, yeah. it's it's not going to get any easier. So, if you wanted to get them, if you want to yeah. get hot, I mean, now would be the time. So, hopefully that works out for them for sure. Um, kind of uh, moving on to our last segment of the show, want to go around the league and look at some of the topics. I mean, one of the hot topics this week has been the Cardinals, uh, who you know obviously beat the Cubs in a series, 
And, oh. you know, hopefully, yeah, hopefully this isn't a jumping start for them. Uh, but, you know, they are going coming into the week. They were like the worst team in, in, in the National League, which actually come to look of it, they're continue to be 13 and 25, <laughs> um, even, even with that series win. Right. So that's good yeah. to see. But, you know, they had their their little controversy there with uh, Wilson Contreras and the fact that they were going to move him to the DH spot. And I know you have a lot of stuff to say with this, uh, Miles. So if you know you, whatever you want to say about that situation right now, the floor is yours to talk about that. They spent ninety, the only, close to ninety million on him. <laughs> um, look, I, 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 I think they are. This is a very hard nosed uh, organization, um, and so. There's a standard that's been set over the past two decades with Yachty being around. Mm-hmm. Understandably, there is a standard set there, and, and, and teams that are that are accustomed to winning so much, um, almost you don't really know anything else after that. Um, uh, our entire lives, the Cardinals have been one of the most elite organizations in, in, in baseball. This has been a different year mm-hmm. for many reasons. Um, I think I think the, the the tour of the pools last year was incredible. Um, Yachty clearly was the heart and soul of this ball club, but so but it, you got to know how to how to move past that. You got to know how to play without him. Um, for them to drop off this dramatically is not a Wilson Contreras problem. Um, that is very unfair to Wilson. Uh, is he is he calling these games? Yes, is the ERA hard when he's behind the plate yes but he's not the one pitching Saul he's not the one who, who who's leaving everything over the plate and when you look at so much of uh the offensive highlights against the Cardinals when Wilson was behind the plate guys are just missing their spots they're missing their spots and and, and, and this rotation in general just hasn't been great but maybe aside from Jordan Montgomery it's not a Wilson Contreras problem um, Nolan Arenado, my favorite player and, and my idol, he's having a tough year uh, b- 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 um, at the dish. Uh, so it's just, it's just a ball club that's in a different, they're in a new chapter in terms of leadership, they're in a new chapter in terms of where they're going to take things. And then you got, you know, Oliver Marmol. And it's just, uh, it's interesting because this isn't the first weird thing that's happened this year and, and speaking of Marmo with his his issue with what was it Tyler O'Neill. Um there's yeah there's a few other ones that I cannot think of. But there's been some weird moments this year within mm-hmm. the Cardinals organization. I think they're just trying to kind of re refine their identity a little bit. But at some point, dude, you're the freaking Cardinals, bro. You guys are you guys are dogs and it's for the Cardinals, I can look at this team and, and 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 you can kind of see, okay, they need to fix this. They need to kind of get better at this. And you can see them getting better again, a little bit different than the white size where you feel like you're like, I don't know. Um, Cardinals, just, just they just need leadership. The Cardinals will catch fire. They're not going to stay this bad the entire year, which mm-hmm. is not realistic. It's not realistic with a lineup like this, with this organization. They're going to figure it out eventually. But to kind of single out Wilson like that, uh, you invested all this money in him. Uh, to to kind of be your next your your next Yadi or Molina, uh, and to kind of treat him and kind of put him on the back burner and say, uh, we're just having a DH and play the outfield. And, hey, he's just gonna DH. Come on, man. I mean, <laughs> what do you spend all this money for on him? Like, well, what, what was what was the point of that? He's supposed to be one of your leaders, and you're treating him like he's uh, an incompetent rookie. It's it's ridiculous to me. Yeah, no, I mean. I don't understand that either because I feel like it's it's like a lot of people have said this, not just me, but it feels a lot like scapegoaty, right? Like you finding a source to blame something on, and you're, you're going to blame it on the guy you're playing, you're paying a lot, and he's not, you know, because it's true. Contreras isn't running on all cylinders right now, but he's one of the best players on the team right now, which yeah. says a lot. Um, yeah. You know, Goldschmidt is, is is doing his best, but Arenado is you know ice cold. Um, even even Tommy Edmonds not not playing well either, but. You know, so yeah, it's it, they have a lot of issues. It's not just that part. I mean, I know I've heard like they don't like they or they that the guys haven't got hasn't gotten used to like you know pitching to Contreras. But even you, as you said, right, like how you, he's not the one throwing the balls either. So it's you know it, it, how much can you blame it on the catcher? Um, yeah, because it's it's not like it's not like you have a, a, a you know a wily vet behind him. You know, uh, so um, you know it's it's not uh, it's not. I don't think it's 
it's the you know they didn't handle that well i should say i i would say there um and i think their main problem has been the pitching they just haven't pitched well at all as, as you mentioned yeah. um and even the guy that they signed an extension miles Nicholas, has not you know yeah. pitched well so yeah i mean it's kind of an odd situation i feel like it's a little awkward because i mean oliver marmol yeah. has already had some awkward moments there i mean with the tyler o'neill thing as you said you know with the base running yeah. thing so um yeah it's it's a little weird especially because we so used to being the cardinal being all you know you know, got the everything, you know, tidy and, and everything, you know, in the right place. So it's it's yeah. a little weird. But I mean, hey, I will say this is that Wilson had a great week at Wrigley um, at our expense. Uh, but he I think he likes being the villain now. And uh, but it almost feels kind of film. But I feel like this feels like when Anakin became Darth Vader. <laughs> We, we love we loved him so much. He was he was our heart and soul. And then we see him again, and he's the villain, and he loves like, being the villain. But it's like, like ah, we love you, but ah, we're mad at you. But you're ah, it's man, tough. It was emotional for me. Yeah, you're like you're, you're kind of like Obi Wan right now. Like you were supposed to destroy the Cardinals, not join them. And it's like, yeah, yeah exactly. That's, that's what it feels like. Bring also, also how Cubs not leaving the Cubs. <laughs> All right. I'm a diehard Star Wars fan. I can quote every single movie, every show, every. Sorry, <laughs> I got a Star hey, Wars tattoo. I, I, it's I'm on there. I'm on. Oh hell yeah! There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. No, hey, you're right, dude. I mean, it does feel like that. Also, how about him, like, like giving it out to the fans, like taking off his hand, you know, doing that, and then getting a base knock, and then right after that, he's like, bring it, bring it. I love it. I love like, that too. It, right? <laughs> like, I like loved this it. Dude I was like, okay, Wilson, it. I like that. <laughs> He turns off, turns off the the hero, turns on the villain ASAP. Like that was that was yeah. I mean, it's classic Wilson yeah. right there. He yeah. he loved it. There's so, a lot of booing. I mean, There's a lot of booing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From what was yeah. said, but I hope people know this wasn't a shot towards the fans. This wasn't a mm-hmm. shot towards the players. His issue was with the management. And if I'm Wilson, I'm pissed off as well. I'd be the same exact way he is. And 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 if like with him, he's like, hey. My issue isn't with you all. It's it's it's, it's with Jed. It's with Tom. Mm-hmm. You know. You know. So I don't know. I, I understand where he's coming from. That's why I am not mad at him because he really did love being a part of this ball club, and you know, he deserves to feel the way he feels. That's just you're right. You know. Yeah. yeah no. I think. I think also like probably the Cubs fans that were booing were like probably like, hey, you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us, time and talent, yeah. right? And they're probably like, yeah, exactly. you know, take, yeah, take, but yeah, it's going to be, dude, it's going to be, it's going to be, I, I will say this, it, it will be fun to go back and forth with Wilson for the next few years uh, as he's going to be on the Cardinals anyway. So um, it's good to see that and, and see, right. <laughs> see, you know what I'm saying? So like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> hey, 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 you know, I, I'm sure he's going to, you know, eventually uh, do something where it's really going to get us and we're going to probably, you know, be like, it's time to take down Wilson. Oh, so, Wilson's gonna piss yeah, me yeah. off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, still, I love him. To, he's he's one of he's one of my favorite players on the Cubs in yeah. general. So I cannot get myself to like be mad at him. Like, I can't get <laughs> myself talk. to hate him. But he's gonna do one thing in the series, but he's gonna piss me off. Yeah, and I'm like, All right, yeah. let's go. <laughs> let's do it now. <laughs> yeah, well, as long as look, he could do that as long as the Cardinals are in last place. I'm, I'm okay with that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh yeah, do what you want. You guys, you guys yeah, do what you want. Keep losing. Do what you want. Out. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I don't get it. Yeah. Uh, the last team I wanted to talk about, though, is, a, is another team that's struggling. That's the Mets. Not struggling as much as the Cardinals, but 18 and 20. They lose five series in a row for the first time in a decade. Uh, they were just shut out by the Reds there uh, uh, as we're recording this on a Wednesday or sorry, on Thursday. So, I mean, what like for the for the Mets, you see them turning it around or is it because I mean, look, um, they signed Verlander and it, it you know, he, he pitched well uh, last time out, but he didn't start off well. Uh, but like, what have you seen from them? Like, and, and do you think they'll be able to turn around? Because it hasn't really worked out in the sense of what I feel like what they were trying to do with their pitching staff. Yeah. Um, you know, Senga has been, you know, Senga has been fine. You know, he's, you know, four, he's four, 14, he's getting acclimated with the league, but you know, the ghost pitch is still effective from that, you know, from that standpoint. But, you know, do yeah. you see them still turning it around? Are they one of those teams that too good to to stay down for long there? Yeah. I just, I just think that they, they played with too much uh, momentum offensively they're just not really performing very well as well when mm-hmm. you look at Alonzo when you look at uh Lindor and I even looked at McNeil's numbers just now we're not we're not hitting the ball very well um so I think so much of that of, the, of this Mets uh momentum comes from their offense aside from the 
amazing pitching staff that they that they're throwing out there. Um, uh, this, just from this team in general, from what I see, so much of that momentum comes from the the emotion of Pete Alonso and and and, and Lindor coming up in big spots like they did last year. So they're more than capable of turning this around. Um, they have they have their they got some tough teams to try to catch in that division. I think just a matter of just taking care of every every game that they have in front of them, and you you need those guys offensively to get hot. You need Scherzer and Verlander to be healthy as well. Um, you got to go into games feeling like feeling good, not even a hundred percent. This team doesn't need to be a hundred percent to play well, um, but you also got to be pretty hard nosed in the division uh, that you're in. Yeah, no, you're right. And it, I think that's probably what hurts them the most is the fact that they play in that division and the yeah. fact that the Braves got off to a hot start again, 25 and yeah. 12. Quietly. Yeah. I feel like nobody's talking about the Braves. I mean, they just expect them right. to because they got guys like, you know, Olsen, Murphy, Acuna just going off, like, yeah. again, like the yeah. usual. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and even like the Marlins have been playing a little better. They're kind of, you know, kind of evening out their, their pitching uh, with their hitting. Uh, playing a little better there, and Jazz Chisholm hasn't even got off to a hot start. So the fact that they're doing that right, yeah. without that, you know, it's, yeah, it's been it's been uh, uh, cool to see. Um, so that yeah, that division is going to be a battle, just like the AL East is. So yes. um, you know, Very because much. the Rays, of course, yeah, the Rays continue to win. I mean, twenty nine to nine, even though oh my gosh, the East, the yeah, general, oh my gosh, it's what crazy. A, oh my gosh, I mean, the Yankees still in last place. They're sit eight games out, but they're twenty one and seventeen. Yeah, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> They'd be in first place in the in the AL Central. I saw something somebody Yankees said that yesterday. Pissed. <laughs> yeah. Yankees fans are more pissed off the White Sox and Cardinals fans because they're Yankees fans. <laughs> it's the Yankees, no doubt, no yeah. doubt. So I think they'll be fine. I think, but yeah, I will. I will say this: I think the Red Sox are like they're overplaying. Like they're they're playing above the, their level for sure. I, I I didn't think they'd play this well. I think I it'll not think so either. Yeah. Yeah, they'll even out, you know, I think they'll even out sooner or later. But the the Blue Jays, Orioles, Braves, they're not going anywhere. I think it's going to be a fun race uh, nonetheless over the summer. But um, I think that's a good place to wrap things up for uh, episode 48 of the At-Bat podcast presented by War Media. Uh, For Saúl Rodriguez, Miles Porter, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And we'll see everybody next week.